and then I'll post uh, afterwards where everybody can get the recording and watch it. So if they want to watch later. Um, so be aware that whatever you say is being recorded, but for not for any other reason than to share the love. And yeah, and I'll be right back again. Hello. Okay, so and this might be a good opportunity. I, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna probably get another call here, but um, jo Johanna's not on yet. But I, I, I wanted to welcome everybody for coming and especially on Rosh Hashanah where I know some people are probably getting ready for the holiday. And, uh, and there's some friends of mine that are joining that some people that maybe didn't know Estelle well or didn't know her at all, but I'm just grateful for everybody being here and uh, I just wanted to point out a couple of things to mute that I already mentioned. And if you know how to use the raise hand function on Zoom, then you can raise your digital hand or I can see everybody so you can raise your physical hand. And when you raise your hand, I can, I can call on you and that way we can take turns saying things. Uh, and uh, uh, I wanted to just point out that Tuesday is Estelle's 93rd birthday, and that's why uh, that we scheduled this now. And if you didn't know, Estelle is the twin sister of my uh, father and my brother and my sister, uh, Frank and Julie are here too. Our father was twins, so Julie's waving up there. Um, so that's the reason why we're doing this now. It just seemed like a nice time to do it, to kind of remember both of them, uh, as Estelle used to like to say, they're womb mates. And, uh, and uh, so, yeah, you can raise your hand, but um, I, Ellen wanted to go first. Ellen has uh, Ellen is a best friend of Estelle's for about 50 years plus, I think, and wrote a poem to kind of start us off. So if I if I turn my mic off and you see me talking on my phone, Ellen, I've heard the poem before, but I just might be trying to help somebody else join. OK, but uh, unmute your mic, Ellen, and then go ahead and you can read your poem to us if that's OK. Yeah, it's great. It's so great. Oh, my God, to see so many of you that I've met or know about. And Sharon, of course, from our building and 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 the Jane Wiener and, and Stuart. And so great to see you. And that looks like um, that looks like <laughs> that's who Sumaya Libby. Well, that's Natasha, I guess so. Anyway, um, Alice also, it, and Darley, our close friend, and Stuart. Okay, yeah. Let me tell you about Estelle, teacher, counselor, and AP, taking care of AIDS patients. I get, you have to forgive me. I, I get very choked up somehow when I read this. Um, and getting another master's in patient care did she. So many other interests along the way. A few of these were opera, theater, movies, and ballet. And many a day to museums we would go. No matter the weather, could be rainy, windy, or snow. And of course, there was Central Park right here where you would find us, whether cloudy or clear. But it wasn't where we would go. It was having fun and being together. 
no matter what kind of weather, because Estelle was my very close friend, both emotionally and geographically. She lived in 372, did she? Six stories over me. <laughs> and, we <tra> <laughs> and we traveled to Egypt, Kenya, and Japan and other places close to home, to Pennsylvania, DC, we did Rome. So there are many more things I could tell about my deep friendship with Estelle, but this is a perfect place to end. And now comes our celebration of the life of Estelle, a wonderful friend. Thank you, Ellen. Um, so uh, you're going to have a chance to tell more stories later. And I see a heart coming from Julie. Some of you know the features better. You can, there's some places down in the bottom with reactions where you can, uh, you can send up little balloons or explosions out of uh, party uh, trumpets or whatever. But uh, you can also clap and uh, turn on your mic and say something if you want. I mean, we're all informal here. Uh, <laughs> But uh, my dog is going to be bothering me a little bit here, too. But um, what I wanted to do next was um, start us off by just showing some slides or some photos of Estelle. And then after that, uh, I would say a few stories of my memories. And then I just want to open it up to all of you to share anything that you might want to share, whether it be memories, prayers, songs, poems, things you want to tell Estelle or tell us about Estelle. And of course, know that it's safe to say whatever you want to say here because this is all a loving environment that uh, we all come together with the Stell's love and to celebrate her life. So everything and everything, every, everything that you want to say is welcome. But let me, I'm going to share my screen and hopefully this is going to work. And, uh, and then I'm going to try to share uh, this uh, slideshow with you here. Um, so are you seeing my photos on my screen now? Yes. Yep. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to flip through these pretty quick. I, I mean, it's just going to be about five minutes. You can ask me to slow down or if you see yourself and you want to speak up. But I, I, these are a combination of family photos and photos that I found in Estelle's apartment and also photos that people have sent me to share with you. So uh, sorry, that went away too quick there. So um, is it now full screen? You're seeing just a single picture? Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is Estelle on the left on the bottom and my dad, Roy, on the right in uh, <laughs> South Africa with our grandmother, Rose, which is also the grandmother of a few other people here and uh, I think the great-grandmother of some person here as well. Maybe great-great-grandmother even for some people that are joining us. And then this is a picture of dad and Estelle also right about the same time. <laughs> Estelle's on the left. You can make out her even in black and white by those bright eyes of hers. And I have a couple versions of that. I'm just gonna get my dog to lay down here, hopefully. And then somebody, I found a hand colored picture, which I thought was funny that they colored them both pink. Uh, <laughs> maybe they just knew they were twins. They didn't bother to ask if they were paternal twins or not. <laughs> uh that's not a real dog at first i thought it was but this is yeah still on the right again and as a photographer uh, some of you may know that i'm a photographer so i found it really interesting to kind of travel through estelle's life that i didn't i knew some of these pictures i knew some stories but what i love about a photograph is all the things that you learn about or you think you learn that you don't even know, you know, it's not things people have told you. And I've seen some people talking in the chat. That's great too. If anybody wants to uh, share anything in, in the chat, uh, if you can figure out where that is, that's a good way to share thoughts while other people are talking. Is everybody seeing captions too? Or is that just me? No. I'm not saying caption. Okay, I, yeah, I, think, I think we have to turn those on on our end. Yeah, somebody did though. I think uh, hopefully Johanna is able to read them. Um, thanks. That's my friend Jason from Portland here. 
So yeah, you can see that the dog's got little wheels on its feet. It's not a real dog. <laughs> I don't know who this other woman is lunging at the camera, but that's uh, Roy closer to grandma and then Estelle with the doll there. Looks like a balloon. I, I'm, that may be Florence, I'm not sure though. Probably. Bobby, would you remind us why they were in South Africa? Yeah, and my sister, brother, or cousins, anybody that can help out, my understanding from what my father told me is that um, that my dad and my grandmother, I mean, my grandfather and my grandmother separately emigrated from Eastern Europe and met and married in New York and were both naturalized U.S. citizens. And they had their first two kids, Lester and Florence, in New York, but they had some relatives who had emigrated not to the U.S., but to South Africa. And so um, my grandfather and grandmother decided to go down there and see what life might be like down there. But they registered Roy and, and Estelle as U.S. citizens in the consulate in South Africa. And they came back, at least I was told, because it was at the point that if they didn't come back, they would lose their citizenship in the U.S. So I think they probably were deciding, but decided that they wanted to come back and preferred New York to Cape Town. This is on the boat coming back, which was a cargo ship, not a, a, a cruise ship or a steamliner. Uh, it was a, the, they built like a, a swimming pool out of a tarp for the two kids, the only two kids on the whole boat, you know? Yeah, Bobby. Yeah. Like <laughs> Kinezer, cousin. Yeah. My understanding was that our grandfather Jacob's uncle, our I guess that would make him our grand uncle. He he told Jacob to come to South Africa because there were lots of opportunities there. Yeah, which there was. Uh, I think he owned like a Nash dealership or something like that. Roy said, you know, like I don't know if that's what you heard. The uncle owned a car dealership. Well, I, I just heard there were lots of economic opportunities there. Yeah. That's right. what I was told. Right. So this is back in New York, and that's Lester, the older brother, the cop. He was first uh, uh, Army Air Corps pilot during World War II, and he was a cop beforehand. That's where he met his wife, Rose. And, and then after the war, he came back and was a police officer in New York for 30 or 40 years. Uh, Josh can help me out there since probably Josh knows better than me, his grandfather. Uh, there's Butchie. Uh, oh, yeah. That's the dog that we heard so much about later in life. Yeah, Bobby, I, I unmuted myself. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I, I should have spoke up then, but I was muted, I muted myself and uh, forgot. But um, yeah, I think he was in the squad car when he got, when he heard the about the bombing in Pearl Harbor. He was already a cop, and um, and then he um, so he enlisted or otherwise signed up to be. So he he was already a policeman, and then went back to being a policeman afterwards. So uh -huh. yeah, yeah, great, thanks. And then he was in Vista as a security. He, he when Vista started, he worked with Vista, and then he did a travel agent in Washington D.C. After that, I believe, and then they moved out to the Vineyard. It's kind of the timeline I understand. So yeah, yeah we had a still. What's that? Yeah, he he I, I, he owned Corsair Travel in uh, over by Dupont Circle, as I remember going as a kid, like you know, just hanging out there um, when we were visiting, and uh, maybe on the seventh or eighth floor, uh, that type of thing, somewhere in one of the buildings down there. So this is this New York uh, City College. I love that it's uh, it's got um, keep off the jetty. Kind of early example of Estelle's uh, kind of not always following the rules, but following her heart kind of thing, which is what I love about her. One of the things of many things I love about her. It's great fashion sense too, is something else I, I knew about from current uh, experiences, but looking back and seeing Estelle in her young life and how 
kind of careful she was and what she wore. This is the yearbook uh, from Columbus uh, or Christopher Columbus High School. And there's uh, my dad and there's Estelle right there. So one of the things that I, I, this is, I think, probably one of her first classes here uh, as a teacher. So she went to um, City College and then got a degree in teaching, which Alice was telling me that you were at the school at the same time as her. You met there. Is that right, Alice? I don't know if you still, maybe you're muted or, but anyway, there's, she, she was a teacher in Manhattan for a while at PS 109, and then she moved to PS 88 in Queens. And in going through boxes after Estelle uh, passed, I found all sorts of photos of her students and letters to parents. And, you know, it was a tough thing to like, not know what to keep her let go of because there was so much a part of her life. You could tell that teaching was very, very important. And the other thing that I found was really super important that I knew about too, which I think, and I'm a teacher too, so there's kind of a lot of points of connection between me and my Aunt Estelle, and the other is, is travel, and Estelle, I think part of the reason she loved being a teacher is she got to travel, um, and so I, I scanned a couple of her passports. I like that this one has got the Cuba, Hungary marked out, that it can go to Hungary, but not to Cuba, <laughs> which kind of made me think about Estelle's particular brand of politics, which we'll come back around to. But so this was a European trip, I believe in 1953. Like I said, very fashionable. And I found all sorts of letters that she wrote back to my father, her brother, and to my grandmother, Rose, you know, on Barnes Avenue in the Bronx. You know, she wrote letters to both of them at the same time, telling them about all of her exciting experiences in Europe. And Ellen, I think it's interesting because you, you always said, and I knew it too, that she, you said Estelle didn't like to have her picture taken, but there are a lot of nice pictures of Estelle that I found when I started. Amazing pictures, you know. Just... And this is the year that she was born. I'm, I'm guessing that's why she posed in front of this stone. Terrific pictures. I've never seen any of them. <laughs> we didn't... Oh, wow. So I'll, I'll go fairly quick and I can flip back through them at some later point, but I don't want to shortchange people that are trying to join us here uh, to share their thoughts and memories. But, but yeah, there's a lot of these travel pictures, lots of interesting and creative uh, wardrobe choices. Still had a flair. Right. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and then uh, so I, I got some family photos so this is Estelle and my dad Roy at uh, at Florence's wedding I do believe and that's Max and Florence there my aunt Florence yes correct and Estelle walking down the aisle at the wedding with the big stamp copyright stamp <laughs> <laughs> even then go ahead This rocking chair was still in the apartment when I cleaned it out. It was starting to fall apart though. I wanted to keep it, but it was just, yeah, one more thing I had to let go of. Uh, this is one of her long-term boyfriends. I, I don't remember his name. If somebody can remind me of his name. I guess that's, Don that's Donald, I think. Donald, that's right. I love it that she took a picture of him rowing her around. 
with her thumb yeah, kind of over the lens. Paris. I think they went to Paris. Yeah. And that's Sabu. Oh, a Sabu, right? <laughs> Sabu cat. Yeah. And then here's when she became an assistant principal at PS88 Queens. This is one of her nice. professional shots as a, a member of the public school system. Very good. She's better. I think she looks more happy in her sweatshirt, though. <laughs> and here's Johanna and, and Jake. So hopefully, Johanna, you're able to hear us and see us. And Estelle with my mom. Not sure where that is. Oh, Estelle okay. Lester and Grandma Rose. Wow. And, uh, the picture's not backwards, I think. Uh, I think the high just swung around if that looks backwards on grandma's neck. This looks like <laughs> in the apartment a long time ago. <laughs> That's very cute. <laughs> and uh, this was like another shot, I guess, for her work. And then I guess this is at a bar mitzvah or a kid's wedding from Florence. Uh, well, you want to help me out, Eganazer? Yeah, this looks like at a wedding, December 1984, I believe. Okay. With Roy and Joan, my parents, there on the left, and then Florence and Max and Estelle there on the right, and our grandma, Rose. Yes. yes. Roy and Estelle in Atlanta were... I grew up where we grew up, me and Frank and Julie. Roy and Estelle in uh, Palo Alto. I think this was for Julie's uh, medical school graduation. Oh, I think this is Estelle and Jake. Oh, that's Jake. What's his name? Uh, Lester and Rose with Estelle. Lester, the older brother, Rose is his wife, a painter. Let's, uh, Stell and Rose. Lester and Estelle and, and Sanibel, where my parents moved to in Florida. Probably also in Sanibel, Roy, my dad, oh. and uh, Lester. And then when uh, Grandma Rose passed, <laughs> uh, the, the four siblings, the four kids, took some of the money that was left and went to St. Martin's, I believe. And so this is Florence, Roy, Estelle, and Lester. I'm doing the thing for Estelle. You could see that Estelle had a real special relationship with her older brother, Lester, too. And this, I believe, was at Lester's uh, memorial in the vineyard. And that's my mom talking to Estelle and I believe that's Josh there, right, Josh? Yep. I can't talk to him now. We're doing the thing for Estelle, okay? I'm going to mute that for a second. Hopefully, Ellen can unmute. Um, and this is graduating from Sarah Lawrence. Johanna and Estelle. And then there's some people that are hopefully here that I have pictures of Estelle traveling with or in New York with. This is Estelle bird watching, I would guess, in the park with her binoculars. This is in China, in the Forbidden City. China too, I believe. It's one of the things that I really, when I looked through all of her pictures, I felt just so much joy about like the same kind of joy that I have of getting out and wandering and exploring the world. And you could just see it really well. Is that you, Alice? Are you back with us? Yeah, Alice yeah. went to China with Estelle. Yeah. yeah. We're meeting at 2.30 instead of 2 because of Penny's baseball game. Somebody's Softball gotta, game. We can hear you talking, whoever that is, about Penny's baseball game. <laughs> if you want to mute. I guess this is a birthday somewhere for Estelle. Right.
Turkey. And of course, if you knew Estelle well, you knew how engaged she was in every sort of progressive political cause. And you can see the White House there in the background. And you just wonder, you could hear Estelle when they overturned Roe v. Wade. I could hear Estelle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rumbling loudly or worse. Oh, that's my line. Right. Yeah, that was, well, whatever. I don't know. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to try to move a little faster just so this is Ellen and Estelle in Washington protesting the Iraq war round right. one, I believe. No, well, maybe round yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, it was. This is Estelle and a lot of the Abramson and Cole clan in uh, California for Thanksgiving. And also my dad, my sister, my mom's brother, Erwin, and my sister and brother, and niece and nephew. This is Estelle and Phil, I believe. Phil, have you joined us? Uh, are you there? I hope so. I haven't seen him yet. He might have just dialed in, I'm not sure. And then we made a trip to Martha's Vineyard, uh, dad and me, and uh, we picked up Estelle in New York because she wouldn't travel otherwise at that point. And this is my dad helping her put a bib on because Estelle ordered a whole lobster. <laughs> 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 and then this is us in, uh, where Harry met Sally. This is the afterglow moment of I'll have what she's having <laughs> at Katz's. Very sexy woman. And this is at uh, MoMA, I'm pretty sure, Museum of Modern Art in New York. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right. And this is my uh, girlfriend at the time in New York, Megan, and Estelle went to a show of my students' work uh, in the Lower East Side. Uh, so those are photos by my students with Estelle and Megan there. Dad and Estelle on the Staten Island Ferry. That button has got a red line through Trump on that pin there on Estelle. Maybe hard to see. Oh, yeah, that's in the back of our house. Yeah. Yes, that's, in the, that's at 372. Oh, that's birthday party, and there she yeah. is, dressed beautifully. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's in our building, Ellen. Yeah. Yeah, and there she is, and there she is. That's her. With the, Every time I'd come, Estelle would go down to Zabar's and... Yeah. Uh, and the morning, the first morning would be lox, bagels, cream cheese, bialis, whitefish salad, you know, the whole works. This is at her favorite cafe, Effie's. Oh yeah, I was there yesterday thinking of her. In her living oh, room. Oh, that's nice her. with Rose's. Uh... Yeah, Rose's painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is with Baraka oh, and Ellen. Oh, oh and Effie's. Uh-huh. Baraka's not here. Baraka's here. Oh, good. Uh, hey, I'm good. here, Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know who it was behind those. Yeah, that, that was the Sumayati, so. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was Baraka or Natasha. Oh, this is recent. And that's oh, Baraka, so Estelle, and, and, and Julie's daughter, Zoe, my niece in New York. Right. And Estelle oh, yeah. looking at pictures of Ben and Zoe, Julie's kids. I, I think I took those. Baraka. Oh, there's Baraka and Estelle. There's me and Estelle. <laughs> oh, me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. Oh, yeah. That's in the house. And there's you and, and yeah. Estelle. There's Estelle and there's Brock. <laughs> oh, that's, we had that picture of Butchie. Yeah. Oh, Bobby, that's so cute. Yeah. It's you and Estelle and there's Estelle. And this was a music therapist playing for Estelle at, at near, like when she was uh, bed bound. Baraka and Estelle again. Beautiful shot. And Natasha. Oh. And Estelle giving me the look like, why are you taking my picture yet again? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's outdoors, right? Yeah. In December. Oh. 
Yeah, this is her birthday, the last birthday. Right. Last year. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's spelling me outside the building. <laughs> and then I end it with this. It's, it's, I know it's a little, it's not really as, you know, magical as I might imply, but this picture was torn for a long time in Estelle's apartment. And now I taped it back together. So in a way, you know, they're back together again, Roy and Estelle. So, um, yeah. So that's my slideshow. I'm going to quit sharing my screen. Um, so oh, I can see everybody yeah. again. Boy, um, on the reaction. And now I, I'm, I'm going to just tell one story and then I'm going to open it back up and uh, okay. I see Louise is here now, Mr. Rivera. That's great. And uh, hopefully people are all able to hear. You can type something in the chat or call me if you're having a problem. But I was just going to share stories. And what I would offer everybody to do is just raise your hand. I'll call on you. And if you don't, you don't have to say everything in one shot. You can come back around and let other people talk. So, you know, and we'll go as long. And if you need to leave, you can just in the chat say goodbye or speak up that you need to leave. But I, I want to give everybody as much time as you want to talk. And I'll probably have more things to say, but I feel like I've been doing all the talking for 30 minutes now. So um, I was just going to tell you one story to start with, and then I'll tell you more. And that's that I went my first time I lived in New York was in 1994. And I went to school to study photography. And uh, and without missing a beat, you know, I mean, I didn't ask for this. Estelle just immediately volunteered, like, why don't you come and stay with me in my apartment until you find a place to live? And, uh, you know, I mean, for me, moving to New York for the first time was really scary. And, uh, and to be honest, moving in with my aunt for a matter of weeks was also really scary. And I remember when I got there, she, uh, like, the first morning, she gave me a real stern talking to. She said, now... When I wake up in the morning, I want to open the New York Times. So you should not open the New York Times. And 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 I wanted to be quiet in here. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to hang on one second. I'm sorry about this. Hello. Hello. You're on. You need the link again. By text. You want me to email it to you. Okay, what's your email address again? Yeah. Okay, I'm sending it right now. Oops, hang on, Phil. Uh, I lost the email there. I'm sending it right now. Let me know if you, you get it, okay? It's gonna be an email without any header or any title. Call, call me back if you don't get it. Hopefully that'll work, okay, Phil? Okay, bye bye. Um, so yeah, so anyway, uh, Estelle sat me down, and then uh, and she also told me about like you know quiet time at night, and you know everything had to be. She said, "I'm I'm I, I want to be generous, and I'm happy you're here, but I just want you to know that I'm a, a a little New Yorker who's set in her ways and wants you know everything done kind of according to my rules and." You know, if I stay up at night watching TV, then you're just going to have to wait to go to bed until I'm ready to go to bed. And it's just one example of what I think of when I think of Estelle, this incredible generosity and zest for life and also a, a toughness that was like, incomparable, um, you know, that she she definitely knew what she wanted. I guess the other thing I would say is I asked her once because I've never married and I I asked her once if. Uh, you know, because I was wondering if I was going to be lonely all my life. And I'm like, do you feel lonely, Estelle? Like, you know, do you regret never marrying? And she said, no. And I said, well, why do you think you never married? And she said, I think I'm probably just too selfish. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Too selfish. And she said, I don't mean selfish. I mean, I really like things the way I like things. And I'm not going to be some woman's, you know, some man's woman who just does what what he wants me to do and you know and so she said something like that she said maybe i regret not having kids but then i've had 10,000 kids in my life so i'm i'm probably pretty good with that so that's a couple of stories i'll come back around but raise your hand and i can call on you and i can help you unmute if uh okay how about um 
Alice. And uh, you have to unmute, Alice. So try to unmute. You got to click on the mic or somewhere where it says, you know, not yet. Keep trying, Alice. It's not, not yet. It should be down on the bottom, Alice. There's probably a message saying, would you like to, uh, Bobby's asking you to turn on your mic or something like that. And if that doesn't work, then the, the last resort, Alice, is to log off and log back on and you'll be unmuted. But let me see if I can unmute you manually. I don't think I can. I'm going to put you in. Oh. I just clicked on unmute. You're good. Okay, go oh, for it, okay. Alice. Great. Yeah. Well, first of all, I learned a lot by watching this. I was a little reluctant to do it because I've never done this before. I've never been on Zoom. But then I'm really glad I just, it's a marvelous thing you did because I really, I knew Estelle for. I don't know how many years, 50, 60, but I didn't really know her in the way that you can, you presented her to me and us. And um, I, I made some notes. I would say we, we met each other very early on, in the early 50s when we both lived in the Bronx. And we, that before I married, because I didn't marry young. Uh, and so Estelle knew me in the days I was, going with my husband and didn't make up my mind. And we spent a lot of time in botanical gardens. And she lived in the East Bronx, I think, and I'm not sure, and I lived in the West Bronx. And we, we didn't graduate together. She was younger than me. But I, I just have to say, I spent a, a lot of time with Estelle. And so um, I'll just make read a few notes that I wrote. Um, after my husband died in 1988, I was really in bad shape, uh, very bad shape. He died in an accident. And I spent a lot of time with Estelle and she was annoyed at me for grieving. I'm not really annoyed, but I guess she, whatever it was. And she told me to move on and it was, really hard to move on, but, you know, eventually I did. Um, so I'm going to read a few of my notes because I don't, okay, a little bit. Um, she knew my children and I knew a lot about her family, a, a lot about Roy and about Lester and Rose. I actually met Rose many years later when a friend and I went to Martha's Vineyard to meet her and we, we visited her and it was very interesting. And we also went to see, we went to Sanibel and we saw Roy and I forgot your mother's name. Joan. Joan, right. We stayed there and we enjoyed that. And uh, I spent a lot of time in Estelle's apartment and she loved plants. She had a lot of plants on her terrace she loved it and she felt like Central Park was her backyard. And, and my daughter, my younger daughter also loves the park and she met Estelle and um, Estelle was, she could be difficult. She could be difficult when we would be traveling. She thought I spoke too loud and she shushed me a lot. And, and then when I, we were eating out someplace or other. She felt I didn't tip enough. So she scolded me for that. But basically we, we kept the friendship and um, um, when Donna's baby was born, uh, David, he's 22 now, 21. She brought him so many wonderful presents and um, when she renovated her kitchen and bathroom, I, I, was, I knew all about it. I knew everything she was planning to do. Um, and I remember when she met 
uh, her latest boyfriend that she had, she was very, very happy. Phil, I guess that was. Um, she was very proud to have graduated from City College as I did. We both, she became a teacher, I became a teacher. She went on to become a supervisor and I did not, but anyway. Um, and you know what I want to remark upon? First of all, I didn't realize how in her younger days, as we all, she was so pretty. She was very, very pretty. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't realize that. And, and, and she had a special way of dressing, very classy, very artsy, actually. She had a really interesting way of dressing. Whatever she wore, I really admired it. Long skirts, uh, very classical, but very artsy at the same time. Um, let's see. I'll talk a little more later. I'll hear from some other people now. Okay. Thanks, Alice. Uh, so that, uh, great, I appreciate you sharing, and sorry, I'm still trying to get Phil on, that's why I was on the phone for a moment there. But, I see. Yeah, I'm not trying to be rude. Who would who'd like to go next? Don't all raise your hand at once, you'll confuse me. <laughs> Don't be scared. And you can just say a sentence or two, Julie, and then Dina mm -hmm. afterwards, thank you. So I'll just do that, I'm a teacher, I'm good at lining you up as I see you raise your hands. So Julie and then Dina. And then other people can raise your hands. Go ahead, Julie. So I'll just, um, one, something that Alice said reminded me of the fact that gifts that we would get from Estelle, first of all, she remembered birthdays and we always heard from her. But also as I was growing up, she always would send us books and I had mixed feelings about it. Um, but actually they always were amazing books. I mean, clearly I see now she was a teacher. She knew you know, what was developmentally appropriate and exciting books. And I remember that she introduced me to Pippi Longstocking. She introduced me to uh, the Mix Up Files of Mrs. Baisley Frankwell. I mean, just some really books that, were, that I loved as, as a child. Um, and I, I appreciate it more now than I probably did at the time. I remember always being a little like, oh, another book. And then I'd start reading it and I, it would be amazing. So I do have to appreciate that for her, from her. I also, also while I'm speaking, Bobby, I don't know everyone on the call. And I really hope that we at least at some point introduce ourselves, even if people don't feel comfortable okay. sharing well, a lot. I, I think would... that's good. And, and hopefully I'll have a pause here with Phil trying to get on. Why don't we do that right now? And I'll, I'll call on you and then you can introduce yourself. So Alice, you've already introduced yourself, Julie. Uh, I'll just go down the line that I have on my screen. Dina, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Um, I'm a cousin of uh, Estelle's. Uh, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say we were not really close, uh, uh, especially in my younger days. It was only maybe the last 10 years, maybe. I'm kind of guessing that I got to know her a little bit, not like most of you do. And I'm very happy to be uh, hearing what you know that I don't know. And I'm trying to um, take advantage of, of your knowledge and the photos and everything. I mean, I, there's no question that I had, she was a very unique woman, a very smart woman, a very sharp woman. I remember once um, I had a, a uh, an aunt who lived in the next building and she did not like my aunt and she let me have it. <laughs> she like they yeah. were not related really. Uh, and they didn't know, well, they were re related, but not friends or anything. And that was the first time I ever remember hearing someone being so open, you know, you could say something like, oh, you know, I don't really know her, but no, no, she said she knew her and yeah. stay away, you know. <laughs> didn't want to get together at all. And that was part of her that I remember. Um, there's one other thing, and then I'll let someone else get in. Um, the first time I remember her when I was quite young, the first time that I uh, met her and the rest of her family, they uh, had come back from South Africa. And my mother told me they were coming for dinner um, and we get to meet them. I don't know if I told you that, Bobby, but when they came to our apartment in uh, the Bronx, I was so disappointed 
because I thought I was going to see a family who looked like they came from South Africa, which I don't know what they would look like, frankly. I was probably like 10 years old, but I knew they weren't gonna look like the Bronxites. And when they came in, yeah, they looked like the Bronxites. I was very wow. disappointed. <laughs> So that's about the best I, I could say. And I appreciate um, having the opportunity to learn about her and to meet other families. And I think that's it for the moment anyway. Thanks, Tina. So oh, one other, one other thing. Um, my sister sends her regard. She's under the, um, under the weather a bit. And so um, I'll be happy to... Um, tell her what what she missed and it's going to be recorded too so oh but great that's great yeah that's great. all of its hiccups and warts and everything um so just let's keep this just your name and like how you know estelle and we'll go through that quickly and then we'll come back around and you can say more just so everybody before people start signing off we can know who's here so i'll call it your name and if i say your name wrong or it's written wrong here you'll correct me but darily you want to tell us how you know estelle Yes, Ellen Mandel is our mutual friend. And I met Estelle through Ellen. Okay, and you live in the building? No, oh. I live in Greenwich Village in New York. Nice, all right. Well, thanks for joining. Um, and I'll, we'll come back around. I'm not cutting anybody off now. I just wanna have everybody introduce themselves. Ellen, you wanna tell us just real briefly and you'll, we'll come back and you can say a lot more, but how you know Estelle and who you are? And you're muted right now, Ellen. Well, it's very interesting because I became a guidance counselor and um, the principal of the school told Estelle, you know, the person who's taking the job and Estelle became an assistant principal, she left. And the principal said, you know, um, the person who's coming for the job to your space here um, lives in your building. Well, neither of us knew each other, <laughs> which is not surprising yeah. because our building is very, very big. And Estelle used to live on the other side and we didn't become friends until she moved to my side of the building, which was probably 60 or so years ago. I'm terrible with the math when it comes to that. And, that, and that's how we met. And okay. after that, for the last 50 or 60, whatever number it is, We've been really close, especially we lived in the same building, went to the park. You know, I said all of that in my poem, but uh, that's basically how we met. I'll talk more later. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, Josh. Hi. Um, so, Stell is um, my grandfather, Lester's sister, of course. And um, I didn't never got to see her. I don't know if I ever got to her place in New York. Um, hey, Josh, you're, at least for me, your, your audio is a little garbled. New York, see Bobby's grandmother and my great grandmother. Hey, Josh, can I interrupt you for a second? If you turn off your camera. I'm sorry. I, I um I got to see Stell on the vineyard a lot, and um, that's basically I didn't get to see her. Yeah. Okay. What's that? Try again now, Josh. Can't hear. We'll, we'll come back around. I, I think. Was that garbled for other people or was that just me? Oh, I, can you hear us? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you better now, Josh. Talk. Okay. Well, maybe sign off and come back on, Josh, and maybe you'll get a better signal. I, I, you were good, strong before. We'll come back around to you. But Josh is uh, my cousin, and he is the... Uh, grandson of Lester, and so Estelle would be his grand aunt, I guess you would say. Um, Stuart. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Stuart, and I was Estelle's neighbor 
Um, we were friends for almost 40 years, and uh, that's how I know her. Next person, please. Okay, thanks, Stuart. Baraka. Yeah. And remember to unmute. Yeah, hi. Um, Baraka. Um, uh, I knew I so I, uh, I was one of the first eight that were called to take care of Esther when she had the situation. So that is how I knew her. And you spent more uh, about a year taking care of her, yeah. right? Yeah. Thanks. We'll come back around to you too. I mean, everybody will come okay. back around. Thanks, Baraka. Yeah. Elliot. Thank you. Hi, I'm Estelle's nephew. My mother, Florence, was um, Estelle's sister. And what else? tell uh estelle did give a very nice gift to, uh, of a book about the history of the bronx to my mother on my mother's last birthday so i just wanted to add she did know what books to get people all right thanks elliot uh jane Un unmute your mic jane if you can do that Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I met Estelle in 1989. Um, we were both signed up um, with the Audubon Society to go to a, a nature sanctuary in New Jersey. And we got to talking and, and became friends and remain friends, you know, basically for the rest of Estelle's life. Thanks, Jane. You're welcome. And we'll come back around, like I said, but we'll just keep moving while you got everybody here. Sharon. Uh, I, Estelle was our next door neighbor for 21 years. Uh, and uh, I just um, always loved seeing her smile, her feistiness, her she was um, a wonderful neighbor, very special. Thanks, thanks for being here, Sharon. Frank? You have to unmute, Frank. There you go. All right. Um, Estelle was my aunt. Um, so my father's sister, twin sister. And you're my brother. And I'm your brother. <laughs> oh, Good to see you, bro. You too. <laughs> All right. Uh, Robert. I can remember, uh, this is my granddaughter, Isabel. Hey, Hi. Isabel. <laughs> I'm good. Thanks on, to Tina's genealogy. I'm starting to teach her a little about the family. <laughs> I, I go back uh, with Estelle. I can remember as a kid, Growing up in the Bronx, my uh, grandfather, my grandmother, the Lovenkrans, uh, on the High Holy Days, it's significant since it's uh, the holidays right now. Uh, still, I remember a few times came up with Roy and Lester, and uh, we would celebrate the High Holy Days. Uh, I didn't really stay in touch with her. And then when we, we moved in 98 back into New York City, uh, she was a neighbor of mine on Central Park West, and I would bump into her many times in the park or on a bus. And uh, I think it was great when the cousins started to get together that I had been able to spend some time with her and get to know her a little better. Uh, and I wanna thank you, Bobby, for putting this together. I think it's great. Thank you. And if you have more to say, we'll come back around. Jason? Hi, I'm, I'm Jason. I'm, I'm a friend of Bobby's. I never actually met Estelle, but I, I feel like I knew her in the last years of her life from uh, all those stories that Bobby told me in the pictures that I saw from his frequent trips to, to New York City. Thanks, Jason. Uh, Arthur, is that Arthur? Is that somebody, another Genezer, but it says Arthur. Oh, just disappeared there. Um, Phil. Well, I'm trying. Oh, there you are. Wait, we got Arthur back. If it's Arthur, who is that? 
It, it's Phil, Phil Gnazer. My, my mother was her sister, was Estelle's Great. sister, Florence. Great, great. And, you joined, uh, my Phil. two brothers are here, David. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I said, I'm, I'm glad you're here. It's great that you can join. Yeah, it uh, just seems my technology changed uh, its ability right at the moment. I, I'm actually right now in Boston on a cruise ship and we don't have really great uh, reception. But I, I wanted to tell a quick story about when I visited Estelle in 2013. I was living in New York for five years and I, I just moved there for work. I didn't know how long I would be there. And, I reached out to her and we arranged for a dinner. <clears throat> and I remember coming over and then we walked just a, a few blocks to an Italian restaurant where we had a nice meal. I got a chance to talk with her, which I had never had an opportunity. We, I never really saw her when I was growing up or older. And um, so it, it was really the first time I got a chance to talk with her. And the three things that struck me most uh, memorably uh, first of all, was how much she looked like my mother. Uh, my mother passed away um, before I went to New York, and it was uh, uh, not too long before, and it was kind of uh, a little spooky to see um, uh, almost a doppelganger of my mother. And um, I recall, and, and I, I mentioned this because I, I think uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a good sort of... Uh, reflection of what type of person she was. She, uh, after I took her to dinner um, and we were walking back, she said, oh, I like this, going to dinner with a young man. <laughs> yeah. And uh, from there, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, and you can join back and share more stories, please. Phil Brunel. Um, Hi, Phil. Hi. Uh, well, you know, I first met Estelle when we were classmates at City College. And uh, we were good friends at that time. I remember going to the Low East Paradise with her and going across the concourse to Crumbs to have ice cream. <laughs> and then I, I left New York and I kind of lost track of Estelle for a while. But then we reconnected and we went off to Spain together. And I remember 9-11 because we were in Toledo and things seemed awfully strange there at the time. And we uh, got in touch with some American tourists and they told us that uh, what had happened in New York, that the Twin Towers had been hit by airplanes and uh, we could not get back to the United States. So we spent a few days extra in Spain. We went to the embassy, they were not very helpful. We went to synagogue there, and I remember uh, they were very suspicious. They asked me, what was the last word in the Kaddish? And I said, going through from the beginning, because I couldn't remember the last. He said, it's amen. You were all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, and I don't know if you were able to, on in the very beginning, but I showed some photos, Phil. I think there was a photo of you and Estelle drinking a San Miguel beer on a bench, maybe in Spain, if that rings a bell for you. Um, but um, we'll come back. I'd love to hear more. I'm going to just keep letting everybody introduce themselves. David, can you, or you turn your mic on and say hello for a second? Hello, I'm David Gnazer, and I'm Bill and Elliot's brother and uh, one, of Stel one of Florence's kids. So one of Stell's nephews. And she used to send us presents when I was a kid. <laughs> this is just one Estelle story. She sent me, when I was four or five years old, a truck that w was a horse carrier. It was a truck that carried horses, a little truck. And uh, 20 years later, she was visiting Florence. And I still had the truck, and I showed it to her. And she looked it over and immediately says, what, what did you do with the horses? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you lost the horses. Oh. <laughs> and of course she was, she was right about that. But yeah. yeah still still always told you, she always told you what was on her mind. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Could have filtered a little better for, <laughs> but anyway, thanks. And we'll come back around to you. Um, Irv. Uh, I'm Sharon's husband. So I experienced Estelle the same way she did as a neighbor for 21 years. 
Great. Thanks for being here, Irv. Uh, Mr. Rivera, Luis, are you uh, on at the moment? Yeah. Yes. Hi. I'm Luis. I'm the uh, resident manager of where Steo lived. Uh, I guess I've known her for over 20 years because that's how long I've been at the building. And, uh, you know, that's a special building there. And, and there's a lot of special people there. And she definitely was one of them. And I'm, I'm usually not only a manager, but I, I, I've gotten very close with the residents and, and she was one. And I've always liked, took care of her when she needed anything. She knew she could count on me. And she would call me and tell me, Luis, I need this. I will be there for her. She would definitely be missed. And Bobby, thank you for having me here. It's a privilege and, and an honor for you to invite me to this with uh, her friends and family. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for all you did for her. I mean, it. No, it's my. It was my pleasure always. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Megan, are you uh, available to talk? To introduce yourself, if you unmute. Maybe there you are. Hi, I'm sorry. My friend is visiting New York, and I'm in Coney Island with her and her son. So I apologize. I'm trying to be appropriate. <laughs> Get us a Coney Island dog and some fries while you're out there. <laughs> anyway, I was lucky enough to, uh, I you know, spend time with Estelle at the end of her life. Uh, I would check in on her weekly uh, because I live in Brooklyn. So uh, she was just absolutely awesome, as you all know. So. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. And if yes, you yeah, have more stories to tell, we'll come back around. Uh, yeah. But a couple more. Uh, Johanna, are you able to talk? I know that your camera's not on and you're reading what we're saying. I don't know. I'll give you a, a minute to type something or if not, I'll. Johanna is uh, Lester's uh, daughter and a cousin of ours, of mine and Frank and Julie's. And uh, was also very close to Estelle for a long time. I don't know. Was that a chat from Johanna? From Sharon. Oh, Sharon. Okay. Well, um, I'll come back. Johanna, just if you get your mic on and you want to shout out something, shout it out. Um, uh, and, and, and Amelia, am I saying that right? Emily, is it? Yes, yes. Um, yes, my name is Emily, and I'm Aunt Estelle nephew, Kenneth Genezer wife. Yeah. Uh, I remember Aunt Estelle always stay in our house for a couple of days when she was in Los Angeles just to spend time with us. Well, great. Thanks, Emily, for being here. Yeah. And Thank then you. I guess I'm, I'm not missing anybody. Then there's uh, Angel is here. You want to say a word, Angel? Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I, uh, I'm friends with Bobby, and um, I never got a chance to meet Estelle, but, um, you know, I feel like I know her over the last few years of uh, all the photos and um, hearing about all of Bobby's trips to visit Estelle and all of that. And then uh, a few months ago, uh, I stayed at Estelle's apartment in New York. And uh, so that was pretty cool. I got to see where she'd lived for so long and got to see all of her books and her art and everything. And uh, so I really feel like I have a, a pretty good idea who she was. And I, I'm sorry that I didn't get a chance to meet her because I think we would have really gotten along well. And uh, thanks for having me here today. Thanks for being here, Angel. Uh, okay, so uh, a hand up again for somebody that wants to share some more stories and I have more. Uh, so how about uh, Irv? And then I see Alice has got her hand up again, right? Yeah, yeah I'm gonna have to leave, but I have one anecdote that um, <clears throat> kind of typifies what everybody knows about Estelle. Uh, I play some percussion and years ago I asked her, uh, I, I told her if it bothers you, let me know. And she said to me, if it bothers, if it bothered me, you would have known about it. And then she, <laughs> and then she, she smiled that Estelle smile and she said, actually, I like it. Oh. So that was pretty cool. Wow, you've, um, you've made it through the gauntlet or whatever. Uh -huh. <laughs> through the gauntlet, yeah. Thanks, Bobby, for having us. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to split. Thanks for being here. And like I said, the rest will be recorded still. So we'll go until people feel like they're ready to go, you know. 
Okay. Don't feel pressure to stay if you have to go. So thanks, Herb. And uh, Alice, you, you wanted too. to say something else? I sh I should I unmute it? You are unmuted. I am unmuted. <laughs> unmuted. Well, you know, I just want to say that the last, I mean, we Estelle and I traveled. I just want to mention some of the places we went because I wouldn't have had a traveling companion and she loves to travel. So I just want you to know we went to the Lake District of London and we did walking tours uh, in, 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 in the sheep meadows there in London. And we went to Scotland and we went to Alaska and we went to China and and we meant to Greece and we went to the American Southwest. So did a tremendous amount of traveling that I would never ever have done without her. I don't want to end it on a sad note, but for me, and I know it's not about me, it's about Estelle, I didn't see her in the last couple of years. I knew about her from you, Bobby. I, and I hope she didn't suffer too much. She had a, a brilliant mind and she had, I know a very difficult hearing problem. And now that I have it too, I know what she went through. So I just want to talk for a minute to um, Sumayatu. Is that the way you pronounce it? Uh, Her aide? Baraka. Baraka. Um, yeah. Hello, Alice. It's a pleasure to meet you. I heard so much about you from Esther, but I never met you. She woke up one day asking me to look for you for her. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's I'm a sorry. privilege seeing you today because she remembered you every morning when she Oh my God. Up. Thank you so every much morning. for sharing that. I was so just... I'm glad to see you. The the woman behind the name and the stories I heard from her. I'm so glad to meet you today. Thank you. I'm Baraka. Uh, me too. Me too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well that's what I want to say. Well, I can, from my vantage point, which was, you know, coming and visiting and seeing what Baraka and the other aides were doing, I, I think Estelle was comfortable and felt loved. And, and of course, she got to finish her life in her apartment. And Roberta, her, uh, her hospice nurse, recommended that we turn her around uh, and face the window so she could look out the window. And Ellen was there in the last day. And uh, I'm getting a phone call from Johanna, but um, just let me see what this is. Hello. <laughs> hey. Okay, but uh, Johanna says hello to everybody. Hello. She's Hi. sorry your mic doesn't work. <laughs> yes. 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 I don't know, but I can talk to you about more later. Let me keep uh, the things going here. <laughs> but you can read what we're saying, right? And you, and you can read what we're saying, right? Awesome. So we're going to keep going then. And you can type something in the chat if you can figure out where that is. Type a message in the chat box okay well good luck and and it'll all be recorded and you can listen or read what everybody's saying okay you're welcome johanna bye all right <laughs> um so i was just saying alice that you know i think that she was you know it was not an easy thing for her but in the end she like everything she did in life there was a such a dignity and grace that she had, you know? She was always saying, thank you. I'm sure Baraka would say that. It was always, thank you, dear. And uh, just the most kind of gracious, grateful, you know, uh, peaceful spirit, even going through a hard time. And Ellen can, I see Ellen shaking her head, yes, about that. Um, who else would I like to share some things? Cause I know other people may need to go. Um, I'm not going to pick on anybody. That would be a very teacherly thing to do here. I see your hand up, Daryl Lee. So please, thank you. Just unmute. 
Randy? Yeah, Phil? I'm sorry, I have another phone call I didn't mean to. Okay, uh, <laughs> well, you go ahead. Daryl Lee, can you, your mic's off now, I think. You wanna talk? Is someone going ahead of me? It's okay. No, Phil was trying to have a phone call. He's trying to get off oh, the phone. <laughs> okay. Alan, uh, Estelle and I saw each other at any of the events that Ellen had, and they were many, whether it was parties or lectures or places to go. I was invited and so was this Estelle. We went on boat rides together. And one day Ellen, uh, Estelle said, I think we should exchange phone numbers. I said, good idea. And we took each other's phone number. One day I get a phone call from Estelle saying, you know, Ellen just graduated from social work school. Let's do something. So I said, good idea. And we had a wonderful time planning this party in a restaurant for Ellen. And one of the restaurants, the Blue Water Grill in New York, invited us to have dinner. Well, that was a nice gesture. And we had dinner together. And we planned the whole party because they were so gracious. We decided that's where we're going to have the party. And we figured <laughs> out who was going to be invited. And uh, wet the day. And it was very, very interesting to really go and get together with her on a different level without Ellen around. And then one year, I called Ellen, uh, excuse me, I called Estelle because I couldn't get Ellen on the phone. And I knew the night before she wasn't feeling well and she had was scheduled to go to uh, Europe the next day. And I know Ellen, last minute packing, things to do, she would have been at home. So I called Estelle. Estelle, I think you should go up and see what's going on because Estelle said she couldn't get Ellen either. So she went up to Ellen's apartment and, apart, and Ellen was lying down and she wasn't responding to me. So I said, we gotta call 911, which we did. The EMTs came. We had to find things in the house, like the medicines that she was using and the supplements she was using. And then we went by ambulance to the hospital and they let us go into the ambulance with her. When we got to the hospital, we were in the emergency room and she had been taken immediately. And it seems that she was really, really sick. And she had, a, Ellen had a 104 temperature. Mm -hmm. And the doctor who had came up to talk to us said, you have really saved her life. Now we're trying to save it. And go away, come back in four hours. <laughs> and Estelle and I went to, of course, get something to eat. And for four hours, we were worrying and talking and laughing and it was a memorable time. We came back to the hospital and the doctor came back and says, you can see Ellen now. And we went and saw Ellen and Estelle and I were amazed. She was up, or not physically up, but she was out of the coma. And as you can see, she survived beautifully. And I'm always grateful for Stell being Ellen's friend and for me being Ellen's friend. Thanks, Sarah Lee. I was just letting my dog out. Yeah, I know Ellen told me the story of how you and her saved her life. You, you and Estelle, I mean, saved Ellen's life. That is correct. True. Um, Anybody else have a, a story? I have a few more things I can tell. Uh, maybe that'll prime the pump if anybody else. Um, a couple of things that I know about is that one story I'll tell you that's also classic Estelle. Um, and let me know if my mic's garbled or whatever. But we, um, we went to uh, Washington from New York to protest the war in Iraq. And uh, we got on the bus and um, 
and, and I remember as we were waiting, maybe we took a city bus to where the, the bus left. I, this may have happened in different incidences, but I merged them together in my memory of the spell. <laughs> um, and uh, somebody, some man, some biggish man, like tried to cut Estelle off. And she, without even batting a, like a split second of consideration, she took her elbow and just elbowed this guy out of the way. Yeah. And then she turned to me and she said, don't think I'm a jerk. You know, when you're a little Jewish lady in New York, you can't take no shit from anybody. <laughs> and then, and then we took the bus down to Washington and, you know, it was like a consolidation of all these different organizations. Um, and so as the bus started rolling, they put on a video that was about sort of the Palestinian Israeli issue and Estelle again, without even, you know, pausing to think about it, just stood up and said, excuse me, I, I don't understand why you're showing us this video. You know, we're going to protest the war in Iraq, you know, and you're going to lose people if you're going to muddle the issue with other issues. Let's just stick with the one issue we're here that we're united for, which is to not let America go to war in Iraq. And then this woman in front of us turned around and said, you know, you must be Jewish is the reason that you're not, you know, uh, you know, wanting to watch this video. And of course, some of you who know Estelle know Estelle was always for peace now. She was never like pro-Israel no matter what, you know. But Estelle, she wasn't going to say that. Estelle just said, why don't you just mind your own fucking business, you know, <laughs> or something like that, you know. And, you know, if you want to get along, like, who, who are you to tell me what you think I am, you know? You want me to tell you what I think you are, you know? <sighs> And then Estelle was a big time protester. I wanted to show you, I, I took this out of her apartment, which some of you may be, I don't know if I can get it to be seen there, but that was Estelle's anti-war collection of pins and, and stuff that she had in her apartment. And Ellen, uh, Estelle was also very pro-choice. And another story she told me was she was at an, a, a pro-life, uh, pro-choice rally and somebody who was pro-life got up in her face some man and said something to the effect of you know you you supporting women doing this you're also guilty of murder they should put you in jail too and then Estelle someone told me or she told me she said this herself she said yeah well if I have to go to jail then you should have to go to jail every time you masturbate because you're killing babies too <laughs> and the man's face was just like you know a gas but, but those are just a few of the stories I remember about Estelle I mean she just didn't she didn't put up with anything. And I guess no as long as I'm talking one more thing, which is I, I during the build up for the Iraq war, I wrote a, an email. I had this crazy dream and I sent an email to everybody and I wrote a letter to the president of the United States and to the New York Times. And and I just sent it broad and everywhere, just basically saying I'm having this crazy, scary dream, you know, and why are we having this scary dream? And there were some parts of the dream which are pretty wild and you know, arguably not the most, you know, comforting thing to hear or read. And this friend of mine got very upset that it was crossing a line that I sounded like a maniac. And so he wrote an email back because I had copied everybody and he wrote an email back to everybody. And I was like out and doing stuff. And I came home and I checked my email. And then there was this email from Tom and it said, you know, Bobby, if, if like John Hinckley had written such an email, then they would have the Secret Service would have not been doing their job. And I was not threatening the president, mind you, or anything like that. But he just attacked me and he attacked me in front of everybody. And before I finished reading that email, there was an email from Estelle right afterwards. An email, Estelle emailed everybody and, and her email read something like, I don't know who you are and what your relationship is to my sweet, sensitive nephew. But if you if you want to be, you know, so like mean and ugly and 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 critical at least be considerate and just do it in a private email rather than you know berating him in front of everybody and every time i talked that was the end of our friendship me and this guy tom but every time i talked to him afterwards he always described that i sicked my bulldog <laughs> on her on him you know he said you know i don't want to talk to you anymore because you're going to sick your bulldog ant on me again <laughs> So there's some stories about Anna Stell. Uh, what else, yeah. folks? Anybody? Well, I'd love to hear more from other people. Yeah, uh, Ellen? I feel I said so much in the poem that I started. 
but uh, you know, that we started with. And I'm just so delighted that we decided to do this so that everybody could come and join. And I think this is wonderful. And um, I, in some way she's hearing it, I hope. Uh, Estelle and I were really very, very, very close. We lived so close. And we, um, we had dinner together when we were in the school system. Once a week, at least we went for our lobster dinner and that was great. And then we talked about everything. So I knew so much, every, everything, you know, guys we were seeing, not seeing at the time, whoever, whatever we were doing. And it was an incredibly rich experience. We were going to make <laughs> we're going to have a bench in the park. <laughs> but talk about strong opinions. We didn't always agree on everything at all. But we were very, very close. But I think the reason was that she had one idea of what we should put on the bench. And I had another idea. And since it would be a permanent bench, I don't think we ever got around to it. But we got very, very close to finding the space. And, and, you know, when we sent each other cards, it said, my friend forever, I hope we'll be friends forever. And, and I could really count on Estelle and she could count on me. And so we traveled together. And then later, you know, when she wasn't hearing so well, so I would find movies with um, subtitles and then we would go to see that because we we did all the New York things and we, we just loved sharing and, and being with each other. And yes, she had very strong opinions. And then sometimes, you know, we would have different opinions. And she said, well, how can you understand that anyway? You're an only child. You don't know what it means to have a family. <laughs> and all of my, all, all of my events, of course she was always there because we were so close. We were so close. And it's hard to even pin down um, individual things, but we shared a common interest in, in art and in, in going to museums and the ballet, especially the ballet was good because she wasn't hearing so well at the time. So first she used to get the tickets and that was fine. And then I continued because then it didn't really matter as, much, as well. And I'm just so grateful that I was there. It wasn't always so easy at the end, but I always knew we were connected. And even that picture, um, Bobby took the picture in the right behind our, um, our house here. And I think it was December uh, still, it wasn't that long after that she passed away. And she told him, and sometimes I wasn't positive that she really remembered about our whole, interaction together all through those years. And she said something that really touched my heart, which Bobby told me that that was the best day she had ever, what did he, what did she say, Bobby? I, it's something just that that was a great, that was a great day. Like, you know, we, we didn't, she didn't communicate very much. And she said like, that was, that was a, a wonderful uh, outing to the park, you know, to see Ellen, you know, something of that nature. And she always recognized you, Ellen. I mean, me, she didn't, you know, she knew I was somebody nice, but as soon as you walked in, you know, she'd be like, Ellen, and oh, your hair is longer, or <laughs> right, <laughs> whatever, right, your right. glasses, <laughs> your, even with your mask on, you know, she, she knew you. And I'm, that's why, Alice, I'm sure if you were to come in, I mean, you, you folks, I mean, you and Ellen, Alice, you would see her a lot more than me, you know, I mean, so it was a lot more etched in her mind and she felt, you know, more connected to you, I think, on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm so grateful that I was there right at the end and held her hand at the end. Me too. Because Bobby let me know that things were really going downhill and I said, I'm not waiting one more minute and I went off. But it... It was a beautiful friendship and a beautiful end and a beautiful middle. 
And I have books like, you know, that she shared with, I mean, I have this book about friends, what is a friend? And then she's, I mean, we were just so close. She, she wanted a cat. <laughs> so I gave her all this booklet all about cats while she was deciding which one she wanted. <laughs> but then in the end, it was more about the books about the cats. But she always talked about Butchie. We would go for a walk in the park and she would say, oh, he looks like Butchie. And she loved when we would go for walks in the park. She loved babies and uh, dogs. So me, I could I could keep walking because <laughs> I wanted to get the exit. Oh no, we would stop with the with the baby. She would oh, and if there were twins, that was great. We have somebody in the building who worked in the building, and he's a twin. So she was really so connected with her um, twin brother Roy, who she said we were. Um, oh gosh, we were. What womb babies, right? Womb we mates. were womb baby. We womb were mates. womb mates, right? We were womb mates, right? And so goodness knows when we would stop for the twins, that would be that would make it. Because we went for the to the park a lot, you know. I mean, it's right here. We both loved it, but whatever we did together made it so much better for having Estelle in my life. That's what I can say. Thanks, Ellen. And about the womb mates, you know, she said, <laughs> Father Roy always said that, you know, he was the older one. He came out first. And Estelle was like, of course, you pushed me out of the way, you know, <laughs> like, you know. Right, 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 right. No, nobody would put one over Estelle. She's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, did anybody else want to share? I mean, I, I'd love to hear something more from other people that I don't know about. You know, I'm sure you had them. Memory, Phil or Stuart. I, oh, uh, uh, Baraka. Yeah, please. So, first of all, Bucci is here. Would like to say hello. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Excel's favorite uh, dog. Yeah. Um, she she loved to hold it to go to bed, and I'm grateful. I'm the proud owner now. <laughs> She's a part of me. Well, um, Esther, I met Esther in her, um, when, when she started uh, in, having her situation and she needed aid workers. So me and uh, Natasha were the first aid uh, workers who attended to her right from the onset. So um, pardon me, I have a very strong accent, but I hope you, you get me somehow. So um, from the beginning, it wasn't easy with her because she, she, we realized that it, she takes time to study somebody before she opens up. But already she had a situation she didn't, um, sometimes she used to forget about uh, her environment and then it goes on and off. So there are days when I take her to, uh, Central Park, which was her favorite. We sit on the benches and all we do is just look at the nice and fine guys walking around and she'd be like, he's cute. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> she'd be trying to get some for me. <laughs> right. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, let, let's go see. So, um, she loves her, her quiet time sometimes, you know, but she loves her, her, uh, her Western uh, movies. That, that wasn't it, the class, uh, old, old classic it movies. Yeah, old classic movies. And um, yeah, she, she was a very classic woman. Even uh, at that age, anytime we're going out, she wants me to wear her, her skinny jeans, with a, a, a nice top to match, you know, and um, even when she's going to bed, she wanted to look really fancy. <laughs> yeah, she she was so classic. She 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 always wanted to look perfect. Let me put it that way. She she's almost perfect. So there are times she 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 will call me. And she's like, Baraka, is that your name? I'm like, yeah. She said, 
how did I know you? <laughs> I'm like, Esther, I've been here getting to a year. Really? Oh, you're so nice. Okay. So when are you leaving? <laughs> <laughs> she loves her home she loves her space you know there are times she loves her space she just doesn't want anybody in the apartment she just wants to be there you know she every morning at, at, even though she had her situation but every morning she opens the door for her new york times she doesn't forget that her situation was the opposite because i hear with people with dementia, is it dementia right they they rather remember stuff in the evening, but Esther remembers everything right after she wakes up in the morning. It was just opposite, you know. So she was just unique. She was the, I don't know how to describe. She was just different, different, you know. And um, I I miss some uh, some of her her uh, her where sometimes like sometimes she'll be like. Mm, Let's go out. I'm like, ah, oh, it's, it's late in the night. It's, it's like 2 a.m. She's like, yeah, but the guys <laughs> should be out. I'm like, 2 a.m. Where the guys? <laughs> Please. And I know she's not that outgoing type, you know. She wants her space, and I don't know. She she just, I don't know. She she's different. She's so unique in her way. And I was pleased and honored to be uh, her aid worker. I miss her till date. And fortunately for me, I have a part of her with me, which I will never, uh, it will always be with me. <laughs> and I was happy to meet all of you. I heard about Phil, but I never met Phil. I heard about Alice, but I'm fortunate to meet uh, both of them today because she told me a lot about them. And, uh, she didn't forget anybody. Once in a while, she'll mention names, which I don't know, but I can't get them for, I, I don't know them, so I don't know how to get them. Then I'll call Bobby. Bobby did so well. Thank you so much, Bobby. Estelle, you guys are amazing. Uh, Ellen, thank you so much. You were so amazing. You were like, I don't know, may God bless you all. Well, thank you, Barack. Uh, you did the heavy lifting, literally and uh, and emotionally. Yeah. I mean, you were there when Estelle was really not in a good place, and you had all kinds of patience and love with her. And you know, I felt safe with you and then Natasha being with her. And that's not a guarantee by any means. I mean, you know, I couldn't have asked for a better person to be there caring for her than you. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, what else? I mean, I, I know it's getting on in time here, but we have a few more minutes. We're not on any deadline other than people wanting to go for Rosh Hashanah dinner, but oh yeah, <laughs> another, another thing, Alice? And just to thank you very much for a beautifully presented, very kind, wonderful goodbye. Thank you, Aww. Bobby. Yeah, thank you're you. welcome. And I should let you all know that I, I did, I, it's probably illegal, but uh, it was oh, yeah. Estelle's wishes, but Estelle is, her ashes are scattered in Central Park. And if you know where Estelle oh. lives, then if you walk across the street into the park, which is 97th, and you turn left going north, about three blocks, if there were blocks in the park there, you get to a pond. And that was a pond that Estelle really liked to go to. It's Looks kind of like what Ellen is standing in front of, at least a, a picture of it. <laughs> and uh, yes, anywhere, that's what that's actually what it is. So anywhere around there, yeah. you get to, you know, you get to hang out with Estelle's ashes. But of course, Estelle's everywhere, and in, in all of our memories, and uh, and all of the experiences we had in Spain, and with Phil, and in uh, the Lake District with you, Alice. You know, and. Baraka when she's seeing Roy in the middle of the night, you know. Uh, but anybody yeah. else? <laughs> yeah, I, I'll never forget when I was upstairs one day and she saw me being friendly to you. She said, 
he's mine. Don't you take him away <laughs> Yeah, from yeah, I was there. <laughs> Don't you take him away from me. <laughs> yeah. That was nice. I mean, she didn't always know who I was. Sometimes she thought I was her beau, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I think half the time she yes. did. <laughs> uh, right, you tell me, but don't you get fresh with me <laughs> i'm like you're my aunt still i'm not gonna do that you know don't worry no but um it's it's been on since three o'clock and i'm having a hard time well you're still on here with us alice so you will we'll, okay, we'll I'll, you. I'll come in later or you come in in a half an hour yeah i'm very sick from the shot oh, oh really so i'm gonna mute her just so Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anybody else want to say anything? I know it's. I, we don't have to go on and on, but I. I just want to make sure anybody who felt like they wanted to share anything had that chance. You know. And Phil. Mm -hmm. and she loved you so much, and I can understand why. But thank you again for doing this. You're welcome, Phil. And yeah. uh, I know that she cared very much for you, and it was a yeah. you know a hard situation that. It didn't work out forever with you two, but I, I, yeah, I, I know I found a lot of things I didn't go into, but she treasured you for sure. Pictures and letters and everything. Yeah, yeah even, even for me to hear about Phil, that means he had a, a place in her heart. You know, she totally. told me about Phil, yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, Julie, did you wanna say no? Okay. Uh, Skip that. Uh, Bobby, can you hear me? Yes, Jane. Yes. So, you know, I, uh, I was with Estelle when she renewed her relationship with Phil. And it, it just, you know, it, it's like it breathed new life into her to um, have a romance that um, I think came 50 years after graduating from City College. And so Phil, I mean, it, it, you know, she was so happy and I was so happy to see her so happy. happy. And Bobby, mm -hmm. she loved you. I mean, she spoke about my nephew, Bobby, you know, all the time. And, um, and Estelle and I shared um, a, a love of nature and a love of music and a love of food and um, going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art on Sundays and walking through the park and we were very companionable, even though we argued. And, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I really did, I loved her. So I want to say that. Thank you, Jane. You're welcome. That's over. I'm off to show. Okay, happy okay. new year. Well, I think if, if nobody else, and I don't want to short change anybody else, but if nobody else wants to go, I think we can wrap it up. I mean, I'll have yeah. a recording of this. You can watch the slideshow again. You obviously know how to reach out to me. So, uh, and you've met some other people. If you want to find out how to reach out to them, I could forward a message or something like that. So um, thank you all for making my uh, time and in, in letting go and, and, and loving Estelle more full, you know? So I'm really grateful that you all came today in this virtual way. And uh, I guess that's it. Everybody have... Happy New Year, lots of love. Being healthy and happy. And uh, think about Estelle on Tuesday. Wish her a happy 93rd. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Bobby, thank you so much for doing this. And we absolutely all absolutely. love Estelle. Yes. It was Very so well. great yeah. to spend time with her. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for I had great walks with, with her in Central Park. I love, I just, it was so much fun. Thanks. We loved her. <laughs> thank I'll see you next time I'm there. Thanks, Bobby. Yay. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Bobby. We love you. It was beautiful. Love Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Bobby. It's great. I am very happy I was here. Yes, Thank you, Bobby. You're very and I'm welcome. excited that you'll be in this building once in a while and we can I see will. each other. <laughs> yep. Thanks to Estelle. Yep. 
Bye, Ellen. Bye, everybody. I'm going to sign off. Bye, now. everyone. I thank you so much. We love Estelle.